probably the best movie ever, ever made. Now, which one? Godfather 1, 2 or 3? Uh, 1 and 2 were both fantastic. I thought 2 was the best, uh, yeah. because I loved, I loved it when Michael Corleone had become the boss. Yeah, but also when, when, they, when they go back, De Niro in old America, you know, yes. in, in New York. Yes. When he shoots the white feather. That's right, yes. Magic. Yeah, is, Absolutely. is that when he takes the light bulb out in yes. the, in the yes. uh, hallway? That's right. Absolutely wonderful. Yeah, I, I when his mate says, uh, thank you, do you want a carpet? Mm. <laughs> That's right, yeah. yeah, yeah. Uh, it, the music, for me, the score, the music, mm, mm. makes any great movie, and this was the best. Absolutely was right. it Mario Puzo or uh, something? Mario, Mario Puzo was the author who wrote yeah. it, but the man who turned it into a brilliant film, that's why we're playing the theme music Happy now, birthday. was uh, Francis Ford Coppola, who is 79 today. Um, so um, he, he'll always be remembered for this, won't he? The third one I thought was a bit disappointing because I felt... That was that the Vatican one, wasn't it? It was the Vatican one, and it was one where, um, you know, every time I try to get out of it, they drag me back in. You know, Al Pacino was trying to go straight, wasn't he? Mm. And uh, he also had... Um, that sounded more like Charlie Drake. <laughs> <laughs> Charlie Drake, yeah. <laughs> Absolutely right. But also, he he contracted diabetes. Oh, <laughs> yeah, yeah, oh yeah, yeah, that's yeah. come up a few times this morning. Well, you know, I'm afraid. Yeah, Would you like to tell the, our uh, listeners? Well, um, well, I, I suppose so. Yeah, I mean, basically. The fags, the wines, caught up with him. <laughs> he just, he just said to me, "You can't believe it, Al. I've got diabetes now." Well, um, no, it's it's nothing to do with fags or or drink or anything like that. You'd always put that on what? me. I mean, you are actually, Al. You you are you and I should have yourself checked because um, a lot of people working around, I know they've got diabetes. I've got diabetes too, which means basically your uh, blood sugar levels, right, uh, can get out of control. Um, in fact, it was quite funny, actually. Shall I tell you about the diagnosis of this? I go to see a doctor, and um, I said, Doc, you know, I said, I'm getting really uh, knackered and tired. I said, it was last summer. And I said, I'm getting up in the middle of the night, and I'm drinking, you know, a litre of Dr. Peppers, you know. Or, uh, or you know. You can't do that. You have diabetes. <laughs> well, I didn't know I had it then. So um, he said, uh, I see. He said, and this doctor was great. He was a locum. He said, I see. And he's staring at me intently. So he said, uh, right, so these are your symptoms. You feel listless, you're sweating, uh, you've uh, lost a lot of weight. I said, yeah. He said, okay. He said, are you um, Mike Parry from Talk Sports? I said, yes, I'm doctor. Feeling rather proud of myself. He said, well, in that case, Mr. Parry, I don't really have to examine you, do I? Because everybody knows only one third of your heart works. Ha 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 ha! And started laughing his head off, you know. So I thought, you know, that's very funny. Then. He got a um, he got one of these little needle things and pricked my finger, and then got a little blood machine, and um, and, and the blood runs up and it shows you a reading of your blood sugar level, you know. So after saying, oh, "Well, through your heart works," he pricked my finger and said, "Oh bloody hell! I think you're going to have a stroke," <laughs> because the reading was so high it was sort of over twenty. It was about twenty one or twenty two, really? and the safe reading is between four and seven. Yeah. So then what you have to do then is maybe your well, Australian fl uh, flu had brought this on. Well, no, no, I've had the Australian flu since then, not not after. But anyway, there we are. But getting back to Francis Ford Coppola, if you remember in the third film, Al Al Pacino had um, had the diabetes and he called. He asked one of the monks... Hold on, rewind a bit. Did he prick your finger or was he calling your name? <laughs> no, no, that's very harsh, Al, honestly. Sometimes you really do chip away at my character, don't you? Um, <laughs> well, he, funny enough, he did say he'll just be a little prick, but I don't think he was talking Pardon about me. me. You've only just met me. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> that is a bit harsh. It is a bit harsh, Al. As usual, you know, with your, your magnificent situation... You know, once again, showing utter and total concern for my well-being and my health. Thanks very much, Al. Let's not make a joke about uh, it. Right? So happy 78th hmm? birthday to Godfather director 79. Francis Ford Coppola. Oh, I've got 78th. Here, no, 79th. no, 79th, mate. You know, let's get that one right. 79th um, birthday. Uh, uh, right, we're going to do some odds, aren't we? Certainly are. Certainly are. You're right there. You're all right. <laughs> Excuse me. It's just a bit of Australian flu. Well, put that wine down then. Let's uh, let's uh, let's. Do mind who is England's number one for the World Cup? It's obvious. It's obvious. Um, I, 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 it's I obvious. Don't know. I think Pickering's in the driving seat at the moment. Butland. I, I honestly feel whoever plays is going to be under real scrutiny. But I think mm. he cannot leave because Joe's back in in his plane again. I don't mm. think he can leave Joe out because of his experience and uh, his uh, his 
prominence in the dressing room. Yeah. yeah. I mean, look at, look at the goalkeepers that you competed with, Joe, oh, to play Shilks for England. Man, yeah. <laughs> I mean, you know, even oh. Gordon West uh, of Everton got one yeah. cap in, uh, in, in the late 60s, you know. Alex Stepney. You yes. Know, Phil Parks. Absolutely. Clem, Schultz, yeah. Peter Bonetti. Unbelievable. You know, it was going on and on. Unbelievable, yeah. 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 Uh, Joe, enjoy the weekend, mate, and of course, Tuesday night, thank you. And you. Thank yeah. you very much. Joe Corrigan. Thanks, Joe. Uh, what do you mean it's obvious? I, you know, I was asking Joe a sensible question. Yes. It's obvious. It's obvious. It's well, obvious. Well, you don't think, you don't think uh, Jordan Pickford is the man for England? I was just asking Joe, who oh. would know more about goalkeeping than you would. Well, he's he's uh, he's actually played the game as a goalkeeper, so he knows that much about it. But, but then course... again, as a kid, you played in goal, didn't you? Because you weren't picked. You were always picked last. So you had to go and go. <laughs> no. no. Funnily enough, I did for the King School Chester Junior School. I was their goalkeeper. You're absolutely right. But uh, then, of course, what was your nickname? Lobum? <laughs> no, 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 no. no he He's wasn't. five foot no, four. No, 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 no. He's ridiculous. But then, of course, my talent with my feet became rather more obvious, and my talents at saving. Um, well, you shots. kept putting your foot in it. <laughs> I kept putting my foot in it. No. And uh, and I moved as uh, and became the midfield general. That I was, um, you know, later anointed as in the uh, the. Um, English grammar school team. Do you know what I think of oh. midfield generals, oh. Howard oh. Kendall, Alan Ball, <laughs> and Porky Parry? I don't think so. 11.30. <laughs> Colin.